Having looked at uh, pitch effects, we can now look at uh, volume. So we've been able to change the pitch. Now what happens if we want to change the amplitude of the sound? Um, well, we need to... Um, there, there are a variety of ways you can do this. Um, an easy way, um, which we'll probably investigate later, um, it's not something I really want to talk about now too much because there's, there's a, a couple of more critical issues that um, I want to show you with regard to amplitude. So if I, I can use a, a gain uh, control which comes up as a, um, a stripey fader uh, and that one you could put between your uh, between the output of one object and the input of another um, and that enables you to um, it allows you to control the amplitude of the signal that you're sending. Um, however, I'm not going to use that object at the moment. Um, I want to instead use multiplication objects. And notice, uh, incidentally, that although I said uh, that in Max you would need a zero point uh, argument for that in order to get it to calculate floating point. Um, in MSP you don't need to bother with that because all calculations are floating point anyway uh, so we, we don't need to bother with a, a, a zero point argument in there. So um, I'm using multiplication objects to uh, to control amplitude. Now why is that? Well I've done a little uh, demo patch somewhere, where is it? Uh, multiply which I think helps to clarify this or at least I hope it does so um, this is this is obviously just a demonstration. Um, so this is all done in in Max. Uh, it's got nothing to do with MSP, but um, but the principle is what I'm after here. So if I um, if I make a sine wave, um, now essentially what we're doing, what the signal is doing, is it's like it's reading through a table, through time. So in particular, if it's reading through a sound wave. Uh, that you've had on your hard drive, it's reading through what is essentially a very, very long table. And that table consists of lots and lots and lots of numbers that are distributed through time. And each each number is, is a sample. So it's um, a representation of the signal as it is sampled at a particular moment. Um, so uh, you, you, you end up with you know a wave shape, um, but that is made up of discrete star samples, as you'll know from your... Um, as our, from our discussions earlier about uh, sampling um, theory. If you um, multiply each one of those samples, again, we're, we're reading samples through time, multiply each of those samples by a particular number, you'll get an, obviously an output. If you multiply everything by zero, okay, we'll assume that this here is uh, zero. If you multiply zero by zero, you get zero. If you multiply 0 0.1 by zero, you get zero. 0 0.2 by 0, you get 0, 0 0.3, you get 0, and so on. All the way up to 1. If you multiply 1 by 0, you get 0, and then down to minus 1, you get multiplied by 0, you get 0, and back to 0. Okay, so basically you'll get a 0 outcome. you get no sound at all. If you multiply everything by 1, um, then 0 multiplied by 1 is 0. 0 0.1 multiplied by 1 is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 multiplied by 1 is 0 0.2, and so on, all the way up to 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, and so on and so on. So you'll get an exact uh, rep replica of the signal that you sent in. If you multiply everything by 0 0.5, then obviously everything is halved, and so you get um, a half, half of the amplitude. Um, it's taking up half of the available bandwidth, so it reduces the level by half, and so on. Um, if you if you multiply it by minus one, then you get an inverse of the original. Um, so you're basically phase inverting it. Um, and if you multiply it by more than one, or more or less than minus one, if you like, so my, up to minus two, for example, um, then you'll notice that the signal starts to clip. Um, this is with an input signal that occupies the entirety of the available bandwidth. If you multiply that by more than one, then uh, that will start to clip because the uh, the signal processing output can only deal with values from one to minus one. Um, so in this case, as I say, it will start to clip. Let's um, input a um, 
a pseudo random signal. I want one that sort of goes sort of across the middle of the screen. Uh, there you go, there's one. Um, <clears throat> in this case, exactly the same thing is happening. Each, each sample is being multiplied by one and you get an exact representation of the output. Once again, if I reduce that level, then I reduce the amplitude of the signal and I can invert it as well. Um, in this case, though, I can, in fact, multiply it by more than one uh, without it clipping because the original signal didn't occupy the entire bandwidth, available bandwidth. Um, so it's just like on a mixer, uh, you can increase your fader level on your on, on your mixer by more than, you know, so that it goes above zero dB if your signal is quiet because it won't clip anyway. Um, but that's just to, to point that out that, uh, um, you know, watch your bandwidth and watch things that are uh, that might conceivably clip. But anyway, uh, the, the critical issue here is that multiplication is obviously going to have an impact on amplification. And, uh, and so we use, or we can use, multiplication objects to amplify a signal or to attenuate it. So what can you send into that? Well, obviously we can multiply by a um, value using a float box. Let's just check our time. Six minutes. And uh, if I play back my sound, I'm going to go back to one here because I don't really want it. Playing back to... And it's being multiplied by zero, so we can't hear anything, but as I turn up the level, then we obviously start getting the signal. And I can multiply it by very much. Okay, so we know that multiplication uh, controls amplitude. And we can go back to the line object yet again, and uh, we can use that to affect a changing amplitude over time. Uh, and so we can use that for making... Well, let's let's do that. Now this time though, I'm going to use line tilde object. We could use a line object, it would work, but um, because line in the signal domain is not outputting values continuously, i.e. at sample rate, um, you'd get little steps between values. I mean, you can't see them when, when it's counting, um, but it is in fact stepping between a variety of numbers, so you'd get little clicks in the signal as it uh, as it as it ramps. With a line tilde object, you don't. It's very very smooth. So we use a line tilde object, uh, which also has another advantage, which I'll come back to in a minute. So I'm going to replace our, um, our float object with a line tilde and a message which reads from let's say zero. So we'll start at zero, and we will count. We will uh, ramp to one over, I don't know, uh, three hundred milliseconds. So we'll do that, and it will. Okay, so it's ramping from zero to one over three hundred milliseconds. You can barely hear it because it's uh, to zero. So what we'll do is another message box that goes from one to zero. And it attenuates to zero. Um, so we can use the align object to do that. Um, uh, but as I say, this, this advantage, this other advantage of the line tilde object is. Okay, let me check the time. Uh, yeah, not much time left. Um, Okay, I'm going to hold you in suspense and I will go into what the other advantage of the line tilde object is in a minute.